Good evening, you're watching The Buck Stops here and I'm Barkha Dad. On the program today, the Telecom Minister Kapil Sibyl joins us as the Supreme Court will now have the final word on a contentious and many say exploitative internet law that has seen a series of arrests, most recently in Maharashtra, of two young girls for their Facebook posts. Also coming up later in the program, Tablin Singh, ever provocative author on her latest book, Darbar. But let's get started first with our newsmaker tonight. The Chief Justice of India is now talking about looking at a contentious internet law, Section 66A, under which India has seen a number of controversial arrests that many believe are examples of acute overreach by the system. The minister has met members of civil society, many of whom are pressuring him to either get rid of this law or to, at the very least, change it. Kapil Sibyl, our newsmaker tonight, takes questions on why he believes that the language of the law does not open itself up to misuse and whether he's prepared to change it. On a day when no less than the Chief Justice of India has spoken about the potential misuse of the internet law that comes within Section 66A of the Technology Act, in fact, the Chief Justice talking about national outrage at the recent arrest of two young girls in Maharashtra for their Facebook posts which were critical of Bal Thakre. There has also been a meeting today between Kapil Sibyl, the telecom minister, and several representatives of civil society as well as industry. We'll be asking the minister how such misuse can be prevented in future. Kapil Sibyl joins us now live. You have met today with civil society uh, representatives, with members of industry. Many of them have given you their feedback on their serious concerns about a law that is perceived to be draconian. Now the Supreme Court has listed this for an urgent hearing, interestingly saying that they were surprised that nobody had come to them before and they were in fact thinking of taking so more to cognizance of this particular act. That underlines, doesn't it, Kapil, the concern this is causing in the country and among a generation of internet users. Oh, absolutely. It's a concern that even we are uh, cognizant of and uh, we ourselves are concerned because I don't think that 66A is meant to be used in circumstances under which it was used by the enforcement authority. So we have to make sure that such acts are not repeated. And it is in that context that I said that let me have a stakeholders meeting, hmm. uh, which I called a few days ago and we met this morning. And in the course of the meeting, uh, we indicated at, as to how this act is substantially uh, the same as the act existing in other jurisdictions, especially in the UK and the US, and that the words uh, that are used in various sections of this act are in fact used in those jurisdictions as well. So whereas the, the, there is no inherent unconstitutionality mm. um, uh, in respect of the sections, there is of course the fear of it being misused because it's very difficult to interpret um, acts on the ground and if you give this power in the hands of a sub-inspector of police, hmm. it is more than likely to be misused. Before we come to the language, you have decided, I believe, to issue a set of new guidelines. What will those new guidelines be to prevent immediately the misuse? Well, you know, I have advised, I mean, I have advised, I mean, I don't think that uh, Parliament is in session, I don't think that I, uh, I, I need make this make this public, but I have advised um, um, that, uh, that it's only in certain circumstances that the power should be exercised um, and, and, and hopefully those guidelines will be issued. One of the things that you have said previously is that perhaps the, the rank of officer clearing or processing the complaint needs to be much higher than a sub-inspector, so maybe an inspector general rank or a, a DCP rank. But is that enough in itself? To well, I think that, as I said, that the we, exploitation. You know, in the course of our our, our conversation and dialogue, uh, the members of civil society agreed that this is an evolving situation, and that we must meet periodically every four months or so and see what are the complaints on the ground. Because unless we see what's happening on the ground, uh, we'll not be able to put in uh, put into place mechanisms to ensure that there is no abuse of this law. And that's exactly what we have done. We'll take a, We've taken a first step. 
and and then we'll review it again after four months and see what's happening but on the ground. But what we've seen on the ground uh, is actually a gross misuse of this act, and not just in what's happened in Maharashtra, which is which has been uh, an example that's really I think touched all of us. But even previous instances, whether it's of a university professor in West Bengal, whether it's the Puducherry police picking up a businessman uh, who has tweeted uh, allegations against Mr. Chidambaram's son, uh, these whether it's Air India employees who spent 12 days in jail for sharing some dirty jokes sort of Facebook uh, closed group of cabin crew employees. Now these are shocking examples and none of them should involve criminal charges. And that is what is well, frightening about this. So there, no, is a, no, no. there is a criminal intent being attributed no, to no, all no, of these but people. That's precisely, it's a matter of interpretation. No? And if you give this interpretation in the hands of a sub-inspector of police, it's likely to happen. And when you see, say, say there are uh, so, many, so many instances of such gross abuse, remember we are a country of 1.2 billion people. And if there are five or ten, take for example the Code of Criminal Procedure. Every day we have complaints about the powers under the code being misused by police officers. But do you accept that all the examples I have cited are gross misuse of this law? I certainly believe that uh, yes, it's an overreaching of what is in, what enforcement authority is entitled to do. To which the, the next logical question would be, why aren't existing laws, if somebody feels that they have been slandered or they have been abused, and this happens a lot on, in the online world, no one is disputing that, but if, for example, careless allegations are made about corruption that can't be substantiated or somebody is vilified or abused, why aren't the existing defamation laws of this country sufficient? In other words, civil law, civil law should have the jurisdiction over such complaints what is frightening is treating these as criminal offences. No, 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 no matter no. what, no matter what guidelines you institute, that's not changing. I think you're making you're making a uh, an erroneous distinction. Um, the the internet uh, has a much uh, wider use than the ordinary communication services like telephone, and even even the electronic media. On the internet, you can actually send a message to a girl saying, "Don't wear uh, this dress that you wore." the other day and if yes. I see you wearing it I'll do something about it. Now this normally will not happen in a telephone conversation okay. and many other kinds of threats can be given on the internet which cannot be given uh, in a normal communication service network. Therefore the nature of the law has inherently to be different. And this You're is, saying that there is a need for a separate internet technology law. Well, absolutely, and there is. That is why you have a separate internet technology law other than criminal law in the United States. That's why you have separate law in the UK. That's why we have a separate law under the ITA. So I think there is a fallacy in that argument that these acts must be dealt with under defamation because they will not come under the under the definition well, of the defamation. The existing penal code, for example, on harassment or well, stalking, wh wh why wouldn't those laws apply? No, no. Harassment means a continuous course of action. Yeah. Right? And that's that doesn't happen here. You know, you may have a one-time, say, you know, if you, if you, if you come to, to that place more than once, I, 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 you know, see what I will do to you. Something like that. And the girl might fear that she she might never go to that cafe. But right? the these are not these are these not necessarily penal code offences. But this is what is called abuse. That is this is called uh, threatening menacingly. These are not offences under the penal code. But there are of course some offences that will overlap. But there is an essential distinction between the two. You must understand the power of the internet is much greater. But the tragedy, the tragedy is in the application that we have seen that is visible, which you have acknowledged is overreach as well. This is almost never about women who are complaining about being threatened online. We have those instances too. No, I have met such people. They don't dare not complain. Many women dare not complain who are, who are receiving these threats. In fact, we need to protect them. But you are right. There are the, the other group of people, if they have innocent uh, remarks about political leaders or innocent remarks about, you know, a comment on the political system, then authorities overreach and, 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 and use 66A, which is also not acceptable. So what do we do? In the present circumstances, what we do is to make sure that the nature of the power being such must be exercised by an authority at a level much higher than a sub-inspector. Is it enough of an institutional safeguard to just, change, we'll to just change the rank of who is processing we'll the no, complaint? Why for, example, why, for example, would you not build into the law that a, uh, that a magistrate has to first order an inquiry to see okay. if the complaint is legitimate? Why not build Barca, in Barca, more you will safeguards make the whole, the the whole system unworkable. If somebody has to go to the magistrate, person who is aggrieved by this has to go to the magistrate, and then the magistrate will take evidence and take action, by that time the damage is done. Please understand that some of these are very serious But how things. do you protect 
free speech. We are protecting How free speech. How do you protect How do other jurisdictions speech? protect free How speech? How do you stop a scenario where somebody says online, I hate Barkhadat, I hate Kapil Sibyl, we don't like their face. Maybe we feel hurt or bad when we read this, but it doesn't mean the person saying this should be locked up in jail. If we feel we've been slandered, we can take them to court. How do we protect yeah, this, uh, that again, that's a How wrong, do we protect that That's a wrong speech? argument. Most of us don't go to court because we know it is going to take years to go to court. Is if the I alternative could, to jail if, up people? One second, if we, if, we, if we were to get quick remedies, we'd rather go to court and uh, not take recourse to any law at all. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is there are libel laws in this country, there are defamation laws in this country, but it takes five years for a defamation suit to be so decided. The and the nature, unfortunately, courts in this country have not levied the kind of damages that ought to be levied to ensure that there's a signal sent out to those people out there that if they indulge in these kind, this kind of defamatory um, uh, you know, st uh, statements, then they will be, they will be, they will be punished. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. So there is, people think that they are free to do what they want to do. Uh, at the same time, there is the issue of freedom of expression. So we need to balance both. We need to protect freedom of expression. And we, ne we need to protect the victims of this alleged freedom of expression as well. To, to strike a balance is not easy. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.